five or more questions with Tommy Black, and we got Frankie Perez on the phone. How you doing, Frankie? I'm chilling, man. How you doing, Tommy? Good, good. What's I'm up? I'm feeling zany, bro. <laughs> Are you feeling zany? I'm feeling zany we like were Chris White. <laughs> we just said Chris Weiss called right before Frankie and said hi to Frankie, and I said, Chris Weiss, he's a zany guy. <laughs> Don't hate us, Chris. We love you. We love you, bro. <laughs> no, Chris rules. What's up, man? Plays bass like a beast. Uh, he's a beast, man. We're in like some, like some like German town, like some festival, and uh, I was with Apocalyptic, and he was playing with Ace Freely, and uh, I'd never seen him in that setting. I've always seen him in like close quarters, man. He was just fucking rock star man he's a beast and he's a character and he's <laughs> is he still with uh is he still with ace uh no he plays in hollywood vampires oh dude that's a good gig he's been doing that that's for a, a while gig. did you know that it's with uh alice cooper's drummer glenn and all those guys and alice cooper, and that's a sick gig uh, that's the gig <laughs> yeah that's like the gig it's like you like jet set around and like jets and like literally in jets jet setting in jets <laughs> <laughs> yeah you jet set in jet and yeah, that, yeah that's a good gig yeah um uh, i'm going straight for the jugular um Do speaking it. of beastly bass players you got a band with geezer butler and sorum and steve stevens what's it like yeah. playing with those guys all of them individually are amazing is yeah, that yeah. Hmm? It's no, it's nuts, man. But I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's. It's actually people actually won't, you know, you know, won't even believe it. But it's like, in the beginning, it was a little intimidating. But that that went away real quick. It's like this is a, this is a real deal band, man. It feels like it did to me when I was in a garage when I was, you know, fifteen. But the only difference is, is now it's with, you know, two Hall of Famers. And you know, wow. hundreds of millions of records sold. Wow! But it's it's such a cool hang, Tommy man. I you know, it's, I can't. Anybody could be a fly on the wall. It's just it's unreal. Wow! I mean, I checked it out. Um, there's a video for that that Down in Flames song. Yeah. And we're talking about Deadland Ritual, and um, and yep. it, it sounds it sounds so good. What's Geezer's tone? His tone is his tone just amazing. It's just unreal, dude. It's uh, you know, we we've been in the studio making an album and you know the guy brought in the guy brought in a, a, a cabinet a head and two bases and as soon as he plugged in it was geezer butler wow. you know what i mean like wow. like there was there was there wasn't no work to be done it's just all in the fingers man you know it's yeah, like yeah 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 wow yeah and then it's you know you heard those that track that's that's just us playing you wow. know what i mean it's just that's four guys in the studio throwing down and it's like it, it's you know, uh, you know, not sound cliche, but it's it's like thunder, man. You know, yeah. coming through the uh, coming through the speakers. I've done stuff at the Viper. I remember with Steve Stevens before. Yeah, yeah. and Matt. And Matt, yeah, and and yeah. Matt's just turning back time. He looks he looks better every time you see him. I don't know. He looks amazing. He's taking his vitamins. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he he sold it. He went to the crossroads, bro. Yeah. I feel I feel yeah. the same way. He keeps getting younger. I keep getting older. It's I, crazy. It's not fair. Um, no. Both of them are cool cats, but um, yeah. how long ago you were doing those Steve Stevens shows? How long ago was that? That was like what four or five years ago, maybe? I don't. Yeah, man, that was. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that would have been that would have been six years ago. That okay. Been, yeah, the last show that I got maybe maybe actually about five. I did a show at the Viper, and then I had Steve and and, uh, and Matt come and sit in. Yeah, that yeah. was awesome, and it was a residency. I remember uh, it was like yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Tell me about um, where you're at with FXP right now. You know what, man? It's uh, that's that's a gig that that I'll, I'll I'll do for the rest of my life. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just it's it's a very organic thing. You know, I if I had to, I'd do it for free. You know what I mean? But um, no. but all my all, you know, and the sh those shows right now, I'm like really I'm doing them far and few in between because my my priority right now is is, uh, is Deadland Ritual. Right. Like all my time, all. Uh, all my energy is going towards that. So, and it's, but it's really exciting to be able to come back and play the Viper. I, you know, I've been playing the Viper now, dude. I mean, shit. I've been playing the Viper since I was 20 years old, man. I'm 43. Wow. <laughs> wow. And what do you think of when you think of the Viper? You know, man, it's, uh, 
What comes I'll to tell mind? You, <laughs> what comes to you know not just rock and roll, man. Yeah. You know, it's like it's uh it stayed true to the Sunset Strip to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's you know it's like it feels dangerous in there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, I, yeah. I I I don't even know how I was to say it, but that's that's the best description. It feels dangerous yeah. in there. You yeah. know? Well, it is. And, 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 I, and I love that. And I yeah, love yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know? It's a special place. Um, it really is. Researching you. I mean, I know you've done a lot, but when I researched it, I was like, there's a lot to talk about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> real quick, you started, you you moved to Miami, and then something like um, the Crows manager talked you into moving to L.A. or something like that? Is that what? Is that what? Yeah. yeah am I off here? Don't, no, no, you're yeah. not off. So yeah. actually, yeah, he, um, we had a relationship um, because he was managing this little band that I was in in Las Vegas. And then when I moved to Miami, he happened to be out there for a, a Black Crows concert. And he's like, hey, man, come see me in my hotel. Uh, and we, we spoke and he's like, what do you got going on? I was like, man, I, I got this little band that, that I got. And, and next thing I know, I was back. He moved. He had me move back to L.A., Within about a year, I signed my first deal to Atlantic, and mm-hmm. you know, and here we are, man. Here right. we are, twenty twenty something years later. Yeah, and that song, I looked that one up too. From that, that was amazing. And obviously, there's a you can do a many. You have many voices, but there was a little, uh, little thanks, Ro- Chris Robinson voice in there. You know, Chris Robinson thing that was going yeah. on a little. But you got lots of voices. Um, yeah. But that's <laughs> definitely a good one to have in your your wheelhouse uh but then that you hooked up with slash later on right yeah that was that was down a way so um it's just it's just crazy man like my 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 career had this like really interesting trajectory so i gotta step back before before that that uh meeting with the crows manager i was actually in a hardcore band in orange county called malfunction and that was managed by bino wow who yeah, who manages System of a Doubt, who now manages All Some Chains and the Deftones and AFI and at Cypress Hill, and now he has Corn. But before all of that, before all of that, he managed myself, he managed my band. Mm-hmm. So we had this, so, so we've always had this relationship. I, I consider him being one of my closest friends. Mm-hmm. Now, fast forward, the whole thing with the Crows manager happens. But after that, when that when that whole thing dissipated, man, Darren and John from System are starting this new band called Scars on Broadway. I right. think you should try out. Right. Right. And he's like, I think you should try out for it. So I was living in New Jersey at the time. I flew back. I tried out on rhythm guitar and background vocals, and I got that gig, and which was one of the coolest gigs I've ever had, man. Like that was a movement, dude. That was yeah. that was a deep, deep project. There. But why? Why was awesome. In, why, yeah, that they're means. The best. Yeah, those guys got signed out of the Viper. They uh, they're getting ready yeah. to do a documentary, and they uh, said that they kind of Rick Rubin was there and they courted him. You know, he's in booth three, and they went up to Rick Rubin or something, and they were just they. I just met with some of their producers to do a documentary there. They're doing something. So. Oh, that's rad. Yeah, that's rad. But keep yeah. going. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not no problem. Dude. No problem. Yeah. So that so that band, Scars on Broadway. It, it, it's. This is this is the this is basically the the uh, the timeline of my career. Cause people always ask me this, and but no one's ever let me get in depth with it. So, yeah. Scars on Broadway is playing Coachella. Matt Sorum is on my side of the stage, on the side stage, sees me. Right. Um, cut to a few months later, uh, Velvet Revolver is having a uh, a tryout for a new singer. Wow. Matt remembers me from Scars. They get me in the door. Right. Cool. I get that gig. I tried out. I got that gig. Right. So about six months into that gig, Slash decides he doesn't want to do Velvet Revolver anymore. And then takes me with him. And we do a bunch of dates. Wow. Right. Yeah. So and then, you know, that snowballed this whole other thing that began my relationship with Camp Freddy and all the guys and the Dave Navarro's and the Steve Stevens and the Billy Dins. Right. And, and, you know, now at this point, that's all, you know, the culmination is this, is, is where I'm at now, is Deadline Ritual. Hold on. Yeah, that, and then you got the Apocalyptica thing going, too. Oh, shit, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which had, like, 16 million Spotify plays when I checked. Yeah. We, blew, we blew right past that, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm Jamie, like, bro. Let me check this one out, I don't know. Oh, 16 million downloads. Yeah, I'm out of the loop. 
but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, that's right. And, that's right. And, and and that people from Finland are cool, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <There's>, yeah those... <laughs> <laughs> they're interesting. You know, they're interesting knucklehead. people <laughs> to play with, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a fucking knucklehead. <laughs> 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 anyway, so anyway, yeah, yeah, there was there was that. Four tell years me, of my tell, life yeah, tell me I about the talk about. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about Apocalypta too. I need to know. <laughs> yeah, that was that was rad, man. I was uh, living in Vegas. A buddy of mine, you know, heard that they were looking for a singer, and that's actually a pretty rad story, dude. They, you know, they sent out this like general song to like you know, to a few different singers around the world. And I was one of the guys, you know, dude, you, you're in this business, man. I've heard so many things from so many people, mm -hmm. like so many promises that shit never pans out. Yeah. So, you know, I, I take everything serious, but I, I just, I got this demo that they sent and I literally sung it into the top of my laptop, dude, into garage band, wow. no mic, bro. Wow. Right into the top of it, sent it back. And about two weeks later, I got an email from their German, uh, uh, manager that was like a sweepstakes frankie perez you've been <laughs> you have been uh selected to be the singer of apocalyptica i was like really <laughs> and then and i was in that band for four years bro we put out an amazing album we toured the world you know i i uh did everything from opening up to to uh for Metallica in front of you know seventy thousand people to headlining our own shows in south america for forty thousand wow. you know so that was pretty rad. I can't believe I, I forgot about that entire period of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of rad. Oh, well, you're excited about now, too, you know? So anyway, yeah. it's a good problem to have. Um, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was blown away when I heard that song, so for the new stuff, too. So Thanks, man. Thanks, all, dude. All I, I'm really good. proud of it. Also, Velvet Revolver led to jamming with Dave Kushner on some stuff, yeah, a lot, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, that's a common yeah. thread in in things you do too, you know? Yeah, you know what, man? The the the, you know, I get asked a lot, like, what was it like? You know, like, were you like brokenhearted when you when you when that gig went away when the when the VR gig went away? And you know, it was it was tough. It was tough to like tough pill to swallow because that that could have been at the time very very life changing. But looking back, man, everything happens for a reason. To be honest with you, I've that opened so many doors in so many different ways, and I consider all those dudes friends. Yeah. Dave Kushner became one of my best friends. Cool. Um, obviously, now my relationship with Matt. I've worked with Duff on things. I've worked with Slash on stuff. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, that that and that not getting that gig it was actually almost as important. It was probably more beneficial than getting it right you know what i mean right with the things so, that led to yeah that's, yeah man yeah it opened yeah, so sons many of doors. anarchy stuff all that sons of anarchy stuff came through dave kushner wow you know it's uh I, i've been i've been blessed bro I've, I've been blessed to uh have a pretty interesting career man and, and i've met some really good great people that have helped me out along the way that's amazing you have um and it's and you're just one blessed. of them, bro. It's, 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 huh? you're, you're one of them. You're oh, one of them, dude. Oh, thank you continue you. to book me. You, you, know, you put me in that room that I love so much. It's like, uh, I, I appreciate you talking, but Well, uh, we appreciate you. I appreciate you playing our humble establishment. <laughs> 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 well, on that note, um, you're playing Friday. We're excited. You're playing with Ages, who kicked. Have you have you heard Ages? Ages have uh, yeah, Kimball's in that band, among others, cool people, kick ass band. He's I, in, in a band with Juliet Lewis too. Um, yeah, I did my homework, dude. I, yeah. uh, I actually once I saw the bill, I went and I listened to everybody. This is gonna be it's, what a, it's a this solid be a sick lineup. It's a dude. solid lineup. Secret Social Club, new band. Steve used to work there. He plays bass. They're, they're that solid. Bat Farm. It's it's a solid night, and Killer. we're excited. And I'll see you on Friday. Right on, Tommy. Thanks for having me, Paul. <laughs> yeah, good talking to you.